Hi, this is Joe Bolin. Welcome to learning about visualbasic.net. In this video, we're going to work with a class. We're going to have a little fun uh, understanding about a class, how to put a class uh, in a collection, in this case, a strongly typed collection called a list of T. And then we're going to work with that collection by sorting it using language integrated query link and then we're going to present our data to a data grid view uh, for a simple read-only kind of presentation to the user. So we're going to look at those four basic things, a class, a uh, list of T, a link query, and then also we're going to work with the data grid view for this exercise. But before we get started, let's take a look at where the documentation is for this video. The documentation is at pastebin.com, and you'll see the link there, and you might want to pause your video and write that down. And then later on, you can go out and take a look at that, and you'll see the code that I'm using in this uh, video. And you'll also see some extra comments that I put into the code so you can understand what's going on. And you'll see the other link, which is to all my videos that I have out at YouTube uh, at Bolin Presents. So... Those two links will give you uh, uh, plenty to look at, and hopefully the uh, YouTube presentations will help you become a better programmer and learn about how to program in VisualBasic.net. Well, let's get into our Fun with Projects exercise. I have video, Visual Studio up and running, and I'm going to go to the uh, file, and I'm going to do a new project. And... What I want to first do is make certain I'm under the templates for Visual Basic. I'm going to use the Windows Classic template desktop, and I'm going to go to Windows Forms on this for this particular exercise. So I'm using the template for Visual Basic Classic Desktop Windows Forms. I'm going to give the name of my project and solution Fun with Classes. All one word, Fun with Classes. Hit OK, and I'll create my basic part of, of the project. Now I'm going to come to the Solution Explorer and highlight the form1.vb, and one of the things we want to do is rename it. So I'm right-clicking and uh, hitting Rename, and then I'm going to change it from Form1 to Main Form.vb. There we go. Now, the reason I do that is we need to make things that we create in our program descriptive so that anybody who reads our code can easily see what we're trying to do. In Form 1, Form 2, it's not a very descriptive way of talking about the forms. But Main Form is saying this is the first form the user will see. So I've got Main Form set. I'm also going to double-click on My Project, which will give me the properties of this project. And I'm going to make certain the startup form is now set to main form. So I hit the little drop down, make it main form, and I've got that set. Notice there's an asterisk saying that we've got a change here. Plus, we see the little red dots on our tabs. At this point, I'm going to hit the Save All button and give it a file location. And we're going to put it in the Projects folder, which is fine for me, and we'll call it Fun with classes, the solution name, which holds our project, will also be called Fun with Classes. And I'm going to create a directory for the solution. So I'm going to hit Save. Now you'll notice the little dots have gone away. And I'm done at this point with the properties of the project. Let me close that out, and we'll come back to our form. I'm going to highlight the form, and that will give us the properties of the form. I'm going to double check by scrolling up to the top, make certain the name is main form to match what I have in the Solution Explorer. Then I'm going to come down and set some properties. One of the first things I'm going to set is the font property. Now the font for this, when I put my cursor there, gives me a little ellipsis button on the side. I'm going to click on the ellipsis button, and we'll have a font dialog box appear. Now I'm going to set the font to Microsoft's recommended font settings for a Windows Classic form. So I'm going to go Sego UI, click on Sego UI, 
regular style, and they recommend a nine point font be set for the form. So I'm going to click on that Seago UI nine point, and that's set. And you'll see now it's also in bold down here, showing that I've made a change. Then I'm going to scroll on down, and I'm also going to change the uh, text property for this one. So I'm going to scroll down to text, and I'm going to call the text fun with classes on that. And that'll be appearing up here on the top area of our form. And then I'm going to set the size. Now I happen to know what the size should be already. So I'm going to set this to uh, 365 by um, 200 for our size. And you'll see the size change. Now I could use the sizing handles. Sizing handles are these parts on the form. But I already know what I need for this particular exercise because I've already tested this. So we've got that set. Once again, the little red dot shows. I want to hit save all to see what we have. Now uh, I want to bring in the um, toolbox. And my toolbox doesn't show here on the left side right at the moment. So I'm going to go to view. And come down to toolbox. And there's my toolbox. And I'm going to have that set. Right now it's uh, set to be pinned there. And I'm going to come down to data. And I'm going to get the data grid view. And I'm just going to drag it on my form and release it. And the uh, smart GIF pops up, which is right here in the corner. And what I'm going to do is make this a read-only data grid view. So I'm going to click these different checkboxes off. And I'm also going to dock this in the parent container of our Windows form. There we go. And then I'm going to click out of it. And I'm going to highlight the data grid view once again by clicking on it. And I'll see the properties over here. And I'm going to rename it as well to a little bit more descriptive name. I'm going to call it My DGV, making it a little shorter. My data grid view for the name. Then I'm going to set uh, some other properties. You'll see that I've already got from those checkboxes in the smart GIF, these set to false. And then I'm going to come down to the alternating row default cell style. Click on that. And there's a little ellipsis button as well. I'm going to click on that. It brings me up a nice big uh, cell style builder. And what I'm going to do for the alternating row is change that back color. So I'm going to click here. And there's a drop down for that. I'm going to go to web. And I'm going to select Gainsborough for the alternating color. It's a light gray on it. Uh, by the way, it's not a good idea to use uh, a lot of colors in your projects because some people have um, color blindness or other um, visual impairments. And uh, making it uh, basic uh, colors of gray and black are better recommended for the design. Okay, I'm going to say OK for the back color for alternating row. Then I'm going to scroll down some more. I'm going to see that my dock property is in fact set at dock fill. And I'm going to come on down and change the uh, select of the uh, selection mode from row header select I'm going to make it uh, full row select for this one. So I've got those properties set. Once again, I got the little red dot saying I need to save my changes. So I'm going to save it. And I'm going to unpin my toolbox at this point. I don't need it anymore in, at this design stage. Okay, we've got things set. Now I want to work with creating uh, the code. Now we're going to work with the form first. So I can highlight the form. And there is a little uh, lightning bolt for the events in the properties window. I'm going to click on it. And one of the events is called the load event, which is the default event for this one. I'm just going to double click on the load event, and it's going to create a event for me. And there it is. And we're now in the actual code. Let's make some space here. And I'm going to put a little underscore and wrap that down so you can see it a little bit better. And there is our basic form when it loads and starts out. Now we're going to work on our form. 
But before I get too much into this, I'm going to create another class. Now I could come over here to the project and click on the project and do an add class by right clicking and hitting add class. Or in this case, I'm just going to put the new class right in my same form. So I'm just going to come down here a couple of lines and do a public class. And this one's going to be called the person class on it. So actually, I've got two classes. I've got the forms class, and I'm going to have now a new person class. Now we're going to put in what's called auto implemented properties. And these properties are how we access our person class. And we're going to make those properties public. So I'm going to say public. And it's going to be a property. And that property is my accessor. It's doing both my setting and getting uh, of that property. And I'm going to make the first property first name. It's going to be a string. So I'm going to say as string. And I'm going to do the same thing, public property, last name as string. And then I'll put in a third one here, public property, we'll say gender as string as well. Now we could have other things like addresses and uh, phone numbers and what have you, but I'm just going to go with these three basic uh, simple properties for my person class that I'm going to be creating. Uh, if I was creating this in a database, I'd probably also have a record ID property in there as well. Okay, we've got our simple class. Now I need to, uh, I'm going to create some people uh, for that. And one of the ways I could do that, I'm going to come here, I could do this uh, dim. Uh, a person as new person and then I could access a person and I could access each of the different properties. You see I can access first name and I could assign the first name for example I could assign Joe to the first name and we could go on and do that uh, for the other ones, uh, I could a person, last name, and I could assign my last name to it, and I'll go ahead and sign gender. So I could go a person, gender, and assign M for gender. Let me make it simple. Now that would create a class called a person and we could then add that class to a collection and we could keep doing that for each one we could have a in fact I call a person one on that and I could keep adding all these as a person one have an a person two three whatever uh, but that's not very efficient there's different ways we can do that now I'm going to end up having a list of uh, to put my persons in and so I'm going to declare this one up here, dim. Uh, and this one I'm going to call people because it's going to hold persons. So I'm going to call it people as, I'm going to make that a lowercase in this case, people as list of persons, person. So I'm making this a specific type. And I'm also going to add the new keyword in front of it to instantiate it. And now I've got a collection here that will hold a list of T or a list of some data type. In this case, the object type we're using is the person class will hold our persons in there. Now, since I've created a person, I could come down here and say um, people dot add and then add the a person to my collection of people and that's one way to do that but that's going to take a long time to 
to uh, do that. There's a better way to do that. I'm going to talk about using a initialization list for our uh, particular uh, people that we're going to work with. In a Visual Basic, we can say from on that and then give it an initialization list inside brackets. Now, in this case, uh, what I'm going to initialize it with is a series of people. So what I'm going to put in here is um, in the brackets new instantiating a person now person and once I say new person then I can also instantiate it with with as the keyword and then put in curly brackets again I'm going to do it in curly brackets like that. Now you'll notice I'm inside this, and I can now use my IntelliSense and hit dot first name and say equal to Joe. I'll tell you what, let's wrap this down a little bit. I'm going to bring, hit an enter key right here and bring it down so you can see this a little bit better. And uh, so I got first... Uh, Got uh, Joe in there. Now I need to uh, put a comma in here and do a dot. I think we lost that when I hit the return. Let me bring that back for a minute. And I'll scroll over here and we'll finish it out that way. Okay, there's my dot last name. Oh, I see my problem. I got a little missing. There we go. That is where our problem is coming from. Last name equal in quotation marks because it's a string. And then gender dot gender equals in this will put a capital M. And that creates our first person in our list on that. I'm going to put an underscore here just to make it work better. There we go. Now we can see that in there. Now we can add some more people in as well. And I do that by putting a comma right here. And we'll come down and add some more people. And I'm going to do that real quickly to save some time. So I'm going to add a few more people in with just a copy and paste. So I'm going to paste in this one. And quickly we've got the rest in there. There we go. And now we see we've got a number in there. Now what separates everything is a comma after each one that I create of a person. And then the final bracket ends this whole area up above where we started. To initialize the list. So now we've got inside our people list everything there and I didn't have to create a bunch of these over and over again. So let me take this out and now we're going to work with the data grid view and just to let you show you how quickly this takes effect I'll bring in my data grid view and I'm going to use the data source And I'm going to set the data source, assign to it the people list. And I'm going to use a two list to uh, make that enumerable. And right there, I've got those people in the data grid view. Let's watch this run real quickly. There we go. And there is our data grid running. And there are the names we just put in very quickly into it. And you can see the alternating rows are in uh, Gainsborough color, light gray on that. So that took care of getting that in. We also got our columns in coming in from our class. So that was a very simple way to load that up. 
But let's say now that I want to have these names in my grid, but ordered by last name, then first name. So we should have Adele first, and then we'll get the other sortings on that. So let's do that. And to do that kind of thing, we take advantage of Language Integrated Query, which is another nice little tool. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say dim query equal. And this time I'm going to use the inferred query. I'm not going to do it as when I declare it. And we're going to take the people, the list of people, and I'm going to do an order by. And in Visual Basic, we do this. We say function, and then we put in parentheses a, in this case, I'm going to use a little p. And then I'm going to order by p. My IntelliSense kicks in when I hit the period now. And you'll see that I can put in last name in there. Then I'm going to hit another period here and then say um, then by. And you'll see then by in here as well. And I could do descending or this one, which is what I'm going to do. Then by, once again, I'm going to say function p. And this time it's going to be uh, p dot first name. Okay, so this creates this list now ordered by last name and then by first name. Now instead of doing this, what we do is we take the query right there and resolve it to list. And once we do that, this gets executed. This is sort of a lazy loading type of approach. This gets executed when I do the to list. It goes in my data source. Now let's see if it works. We hit start. And our list came in. And sure enough, it's sorted by last name, first name. And we have everything in order. So what I would like to just uh, give to you with this lesson is that we can create a simple list with the auto implement approach. Um, you'll learn more about how to create more sophisticated classes where you not only do you have uh, getter and setter classes, but you're going to also validate uh, the setting of the class property. And you're also going to have maybe some methods. For example, you'll have a constructor to construct the class. Uh, you'll also have methods and functions that you'll access that class. But for this one, we're just going to have a very simple uh, three different properties for our class. We're going to then uh, have a list to be a collection to hold that. In this case, it's we did uh, people as a new list of the person class. And so our list is going to hold persons in it. And then I uh, used a uh, initialization list to quickly put in starting with the from there, put in the different persons into our people list on that very simple way to load. And what's nice about this is that as you uh, use this kind of method, you'll discover that it is a much quicker way to load up a list. A lot of times you need to have some dummy data in your list to start with. Now, our list could have come in from a database. It could have also come in from a, a simple text file or a comma-separated variable file. And we could have loaded it in and put it into our people list. And then you saw how quickly it was uh, that I could order the list uh, with using link. And link is another area that you'll want to have fun learning about and taking advantage of. And once I have it queried, then I can just enumerate it to list and, and uh, load it in as a data source for my data grid view and run it. So we see we can make a quick, simple, but nice presentation uh, data grid view of a collection of people, in this case coming from our person class that we're using 
uh, loading it up with the different names. So I hope you had fun learning about this. I hope you'll go out to the website at Pastebin and take a look at how I did that and study it in more detail. And I also recommend you go out to Microsoft Development Network, MSDN, and take a look at the different parts that we're working with, the list of T, the link querying, and also working with classes. Do some of the walkthroughs that are out there and become comfortable with classes. And as you watch more of my videos, we'll work with classes as well, uh, where you'll get to develop more uh, sophisticated classes. Ours is just a simple three property class that we were working with and loading up our uh, list on that. So you take care, get your hands dirty in the code, try it out. This is a very short little program that you can try and learn how to work with. You can add more properties to it if you'd like. Uh, maybe you want to put in some, the addresses and city and state and phone numbers into your uh, definition of a person. And you can uh, then put that into your data grid view. And the, what's nice about the data grid view is it'll automatically configure itself with the headings that are part of your class you're working with. So have fun, get your hands dirty in the code, and take care.